Yakum Tridim Yedakam. This is Shana's report is for May the 1st, which is actually a holiday, so obviously it will correspond to the day after that because it's also a big holiday in Europe as well. As we can see, that magenta skyrocketing above uh, yellow MBI was enough. Uh, you know, this was sort of a tell when our MBI white faded on that, and we knew that we had a full reset. and. That's a strong move from short-term buyers, and they captured just enough shorts there to really push that move and then the follow-through, bringing us, uh, well, uh, literally what was in, indicated from the uh, checkout goal that we were waiting for move to the 100%. Of course, a little teeny dip in the 100%. Not significant. So right in line with that, and that huge move lower of um, DOC, orange, below everything so that's all strong and you can see even from a DOC standpoint here the cyan just collapsing and that's the short so you've got midterm buyers as well in the green rising and turn around in the green so from a broad standpoint it's a big like giant p2 pivot so to speak from a rising DOC red and it was just a matter of held on, filled in positive extreme that took place. That was the most powerful uh, and key element uh, of that. And that was enough to uh, drive things forward from an NQ standpoint, already reaching its uh, 100% and uh, satisfying that. And it had the you know, most complete softness, but it was one of those where, you know, we didn't see the breakdown when it uh, broke to the zero and started going negative. Um, and it was just minor again, filling these positive extremes that take us back over to here and took it all the way to the 61%. And that was enough for the turnaround to begin. And again, that was the, the tough side of the trade I've been saying is that uh, to the upside. And because it doesn't make a lot of sense in so many people's views and uh, given what we're seeing, but this expectation that easing is coming. Um, a strong motivator. Uh, you look at TLT from a treasury standpoint, that's a massive uh, indication that uh, TLT should be fading and uh, hasn't started to do that. And the fade on the TLT would just be a uh, rise of rates because we're already well below uh, what current rates are running at. And that's, again, this strong expectation that the Fed is just going to make an about course. And as long as the Fed ends up doing that, that works out beautifully. Uh, it'd be, if they don't, well, yeah, that, that's a scenario that uh, uh, people aren't positioned for, at least uh, the majority, I mean, um, that have the control over things. And from an oil standpoint, pushing back up, uh, it'd have been a nice retrace in oil filling in that uh, complete gap there. Uh, still, uh, Softness in the lead, but with that uh, magenta turning around, it was enough to give it support, as well as that uh, orange dip coming back lower. So I would still expect oil to continue to rise. Uh, you know, it's one of those things where, unless the U.S. Uh, opens things up, uh, kind of in an unlimited way, uh, you know, OPEC's going to have a strong play again, uh, whereas they didn't before. And now, with a significant number of trades that take place outside of uh, U.S. oil uh, dollars, uh, it's an interesting one, and it's definitely going to have its uh, longer-term effect as we've seen the U.S. reserve currency status drop, you know, below 50 percent uh, worldwide now. And, uh, you know, it's an interesting one because even in Europe, um, they solved their issue with oil uh, from Russia just by buying it from India. So India's bringing in record oil, making some changes to things, and or in some cases not, and selling it back to Europe. So Europeans just paying a higher price for the same thing they would have got if they just bought it direct. But looks good. Get their political cover. Uh, from a euro standpoint, that uh, rise in the euro has been unabated, and it certainly isn't off the economics of what's taking place in Europe. Though you've seen, you know, some improvement in things uh, as far as uh, you know the euro stocks, things like that. But there isn't any real fundamental change. In fact, uh, you know, there's still the same banking crisis in effect. If it spreads at all from uh, America, which has not completely dealt with that one, it's still uh, lingering in the background. Um, so far, the Fed's done all right in satisfying the situation. Um, but 
there's some concern still built into that situation and uh, hasn't fully uh, evaporated from a uh, risk standpoint. So this leaves you with your cryptos should continue to do their uh, rise further back up to their 100%. It's the same with ETH doing so as well. Um, it's just, again, you know, this finding that uh, inverse situation of risk and who's positioned strongest the wrong way so that you can take advantage of them. And uh, we can see from it was just a couple of days ago, the beginning turnaround. And uh, once Magenta took the lead back here in the MBI, we moved to positive shakeout that was in the middle range right about here. Um, it's just been a nonstop uh, assault to the top. And uh, of course, uh, Power Mode 2T uh, it's definitely uh, went with it in the long direction as well as went with it from the short direction. So it all worked out. And it, yes, solved some of our TS issues. Uh, hopefully that uh, will stay that way. It's nice to have them back. For me, they come back on and off and then it just fades on me. So to me, the reliability issue, that's, it's an issue uh, that uh, it's going to have to prove that it can sustain itself. So we can see from close previous day, it had filled in positive extremes that existed there and actually went to some of the previous algo 4130. I mean, these are numbers that we hadn't changed from a while ago and they've proven to still be consistent. So and when you get a situation like that, what it is, you've got an algo that is finding an area that works and works effectively. Just rinse and repeat. Uh, no reason not to. Uh, but just continue to keep doing that over and over again. So positive extremes all throughout this entire run up, which was right off the 4157. So what happens? You come right back to the 4157 and start over again. And this was a pretty good volume day. Uh, you can see the amount of range that you have to slide across from there. Um, and once we got uh, through that, we broke out into new high and then just have sort of uh, fought right back into that. And I think it was just a matter of uh, building on that uh, breakout move from there and conveniently stopping just before that 4194 resistant uh, algo that had uh, pre existed. So, all in all, good stuff. Uh, new indicators uh, for uh, May coming out. So, be ready for that. As always, though, trade well. Look for me on Skype chat. Have a good one.